Okay, so we're going to talk a lot about planning during the summer, but I know that a lot of what you are anticipating has to do with when you get to campus next fall. And I want to address that just a little bit because I know in some ways it's probably more in the front of your mind than your classes, especially since many of you, I think, are still finishing up your high school classes, and so I can understand you might not be ready to jump into the whole academic scene yet. But I know that what a lot of you are thinking about is, who's this person I'm going to live with? when I move to campus? What's it going to be like living on the Barnard campus? So I want to talk about this just a little to, to see if I can satisfy your curiosity just a bit. Although this is not the area that I will be overseeing, I can certainly answer questions, but the person who is overseeing the first year students in our residence halls is a person named Courtney Bazin Colvin. I've uh, given you her contact information here. Students, you may have already received emails from her. If you haven't, though, you will be receiving them shortly. She is the person who is on the receiving end of the forms that you have been filling out about your lifestyle, about your living arrangements that she will use to pair you with a roommate or roommates. And she does look at those very carefully to see if she can pair you with people who are compatible to your lifestyle, who you can live in harmony with, at least most of the time. And some people may find that they become good friends with their roommates, but it's fine if you just um, sort of cohabit peacefully. Um, is also a wonderful kind of arrangement to have. So she's going to be looking at those forms that you fill out. And if you have any questions about the residence halls, about living on campus, you should certainly feel free to be in touch with her. And there is a, a part of the Residential Life website. Again, the Residential Life website is linked to the first year blog if you want to find it easily. But there is a site that's dedicated to new students. And if you haven't already done so, you might want to check this out and see not only the section on roommates, for those of you who may have never shared a room before, or those of you who are trying to figure out if you'd like to let Barnard pair you with somebody rather than requesting someone you already know, you can learn something about roommates there. But also above that, I want to highlight something called what to bring. And this information will come to you uh, via email later in the summer as well. But this is a list that you might want to check out, if not now, certainly in August, as you're thinking about what sort of things to bring to make your room convenient, to make your room homey, and which ones you should leave at home because they aren't acceptable in the residence halls um, or we already provide them in some way, shape, or form. So when will you get all of this information? You will get an email from Courtney Bazin Colvin in early August, and that email will have the names and contact information of your roommate or roommates. All first year students live in either a double, not either, one of a double, triple, or quad, and you will receive the name of your roommate or roommates, depending on what kind of room you've been placed in. And that way you'll have a chance during the month of August to contact your roommates, get to know them, uh, not just get to know them personally, but also maybe make some plans about who's bringing what. You might not need five printers or three trash cans or things like that, and so you might want to think about um, whether there are things that you already feel comfortable sharing or whether there are things that you already feel you want to split the rent on a, something like a rented refrigerator or something like that. So you'll have some time to get to know one another. And then you'll move on to campus and into your rooms on Sunday, August 25th. And I just wanted to say a few words about move-in so you know what to expect because it's, it's really, I think, remarkable and a really well-oiled machine. Um, when you arrive on the 25th, the thing I want to highlight about the email from Courtney is the information in the body of the email will be your roommates, and so that is where your attention is going to be. Don't forget that there is also an attachment to this email and a PDF. It's a newsletter for you and your family, and it will not only go over things like uh, introducing you to people in res life, giving you that list of what to bring and what not to bring, but it's also going to tell you the schedule of move-in day. So the move-in period on Sunday the 25th is allotted from around 7 a.m. until around 12 p.m. What I have found is we're always done early because it runs so smoothly. But you'll be asked to come during a window of time that's based on your room assignment. They'll start with the people on the higher floors and work their way down. And here's the thing that's so nice about it. You will pull up to the Barnard Gates, and we will have the lane closest to campus blocked off so that you can pull up and you will move your things out of your car and you will, and you will be swarmed, actually, by a bunch of co-eds in brightly colored t-shirts who will help you move all your things onto the sidewalk in a chalked area. And it's kind of interesting to see your whole life in a sort of chalked box on Broadway. And we'll ask you to hang on for a few minutes, students, you'll register. And then these same wonderful, cheerful, smiling co-eds will come back with big rolling bins and they will help you load the things into those. They will whisk you up the elevators, help you unload everything into your room, and it will all be done 
done in the blink of an eye. Settling in will take some more time as you figure out where to put everything, but getting ev everything into your room takes no time at all, relatively speaking. And I encourage all of you, students and parents, to cherish this because it only happens once. You're on your own when you're a sophomore, junior, and senior, so enjoy all that help now as we get you moved in. Um, so please do take a look at that newsletter to see what time you're scheduled to move in. And at this point, I'm going to pause and ask Gia if she will share um, her own experience about getting accustomed to campus, figuring out how to live with someone else, and just kind of highlights about living on campus that you might want to think about. So my advice about living on campus would basically be to keep an open mind about it. Um, I lived in a double in Salzburger during my first year. Um, my roommate and I weren't best friends, but we got along very well. Um, we were friendly, we had pretty similar habits, and so we were able to live in the same space um, pretty smoothly. Um, I would definitely encourage you to have conversations from the very, very beginning of the year about what's important to you. Um, you're asked to fill out that form asking you what's important to you, but also just be sure to tell your roommate that and be sure that your roommate tells you what's important to her because these things may seem small at the beginning of the year. You know, it might kind of annoy you if your roommate leaves some like door open and you don't want the door to be left open or if your roommate's being a little too noisy in the morning. But if you're really stressed at the end of the semester or if you're having a really bad day or if it just happens continuously throughout the year and you guys don't have a forum in which to address it, it can become a big issue and it can make you feel like you don't feel at home in your room and you don't want that to happen. So I would just say be sure to have those conversations so that you do have an open relationship with this person who's your roommate. Um, but overall, I had a really positive experience. Um, my roommate and I got along very well. Our biggest problem was that she woke up late and I woke up at 6 a.m. And so I sort of had to tiptoe around in the morning, but it was fine because we sort of had an understanding that that was the way it was. And I studied in the study hall in the, um, in the, study hall in the morning and she slept in the room. And then at night, if she was up a little later than me, she would go into the lounge and work there. Um, so we sort of worked that out and made it happen. Um, and as Dean Halbo, I think, suggested, we strongly encourage that you are open or consider the possibility of having res life match you to your roommate rather than necessarily selecting someone who you knew before, just because they have a very thought out process for assigning roommates um, and it's usually almost always effective. Whereas sometimes the people who are your friends might not be the best people to live with, just because you may not have thought about exactly how each of you lives in your space, and sometimes it can be a little too close for comfort to be with your best friends all the time. Um, so it's, of course it's an option that's available to you if you want it, but it is something to think about if you were thinking about living with someone who you already know. It's worth thinking about whether maybe you might want to be with someone new. Um, but I would also just say to take advantage of the community that you do have in the residence halls, um, or if you're a commuter, the community that you have with your fellow commuters and with the, your other students at Barnard, just because, especially if you don't know anyone at Barnard, it is a really good place to get to know people um, with similar interests. Oftentimes, you'll find people in your hall. My roommate for the past three years and my best friend at Barnard was a student who lived in my hall my first year, just really try to form those relationships and take advantage of the fact that you do have those people right with you um, because it's really a great chance to feel from the very beginning like a part of the Barnard community. Now, I'm sure there are probably a couple of questions, but before we open up to questions about living here, I just want to say just a couple of words about after you move in, the week of orientation that you will have before classes begin. So I, part of this is to reassure you that if anything is flying by a little too quickly right now, then you will have a chance to hear this again and again, not just by talking to us in our office during the summer, but during the week of orientation. Um, so just to give you a sense, um, orientation begins right after you move in. Uh, parents, you might just want to know on move-in day that there are some programs for you, some uh, welcome events for you, and then at about 3.30, we pull out the Kleenex and kindly usher you off campus. So it happens really quickly uh, that everything turns into student orientation uh, from move-in. And for students, it might be a good idea just to have a heads-up about orientation because it is 
fun, it is exciting, it is jam-packed. It can also be slightly overwhelming and a little bit frenetic. And so I think it's good for you to know that going in because you, I would encourage you, uh, whether you're someone who considers yourself outgoing and extroverted or whether you're someone who considers yourself a little bit shy or an introverted, it's a, a kind of crazy time for everyone to try to meet as new, many new people as possible. But I, So I encourage all of you to try to jump in with both feet because it is a time for you to meet as many people as you can without other responsibilities, without classes and other things like that happening yet. Um, but it is something that if you need to step away and take a breather and go back to your room and get a little bit settled, have a cup of tea, relax, that's perfectly fine. To give you a sense of orientation, there is a website, again, linked to the blog, about new student orientation. It, we, call, we usually refer to it by its acronym NSOP. And you can read a little bit on the page, and if you scroll all the way down to the end of the page, you'll see that they have linked the schedule books from last year. The schedule books for this year's schedule, which will be slightly different, will, will be available sometime in August. But if you wanted to look at the first year schedule of last year's orientation, you can get a sense of what it was like. And you will see that once you get down the page, which I'm not doing as quickly as I'd like, but once you get into the schedule, there is something practically, I'm not going to get to the schedule part very quickly, but there is something scheduled pretty much every hour of daylight during orientation. So again, you want to look through the book when you get your booklet for this August and look at what's required, what you really need to attend to make sure that you know what you need to know. You might want to look at things that are optional, that you might want the information, and then you might want to think about where there's some downtime for you. So just to give you a sense, during orientation there will be academic programs. You'll meet your advisor for the first time, first in a group with the other first year students who share your advisor and then one-on-one -on -one with your advisor. There may be academic placement exams that you might want to take, for example, in a foreign language that week. Academic departments and programs often have open houses that week, so you can drop by, meet a few faculty members, learn a little bit more about the courses, learn a, bit, a little bit more about long-term planning in those programs. There are what I would call administrative sessions, so you'll meet people from the different student services offices, find out a little bit more about what they do, who they are, how you contact them, when you might want to contact them, when you might need to contact them, and so you'll get a sense of where they are and who they are. Um, informational sessions, um, for those of you who might want a job on campus, there'll be a session for you to learn how work-study jobs work, how to apply for them, what kind of paperwork you need to do. If you're interested in community service, there will be orientation sessions and some paperwork for you to sign up with the group that would let you know about opportunities. Those kind of informational sessions. And then finally, but not least, there are going to be social events for you to meet people. And they will be targeted to different groups so that you can meet just the people in your hallway, as Gia was, Gia was saying, start building those relationships as quickly as possible. You'll have some moments where you and your roommate or roommates will just get together in your room and have some of these talks about what your expectations are, what your preferences are, kind of laying the groundwork for the year to come. There'll be uh, social events for all Barnard students. There'll be social events for all of the undergraduate colleges of Columbia University, so you'll be with other students from Columbia College and School of Engineering and School of General Studies as well. And there's always at least one, we usually refer to it as the New York City event because all the undergraduate students take over some kind of landmark place in New York for an evening, which is so fun. And it could be the Bronx Zoo, it could be the Intrepid, it could be the Metropolitan Museum. And it's always just, I think, an amazing moment for you to feel that it, Barnard and Columbia are not only, the, not only the things that are yours, but New York City is also kind of at your fingertips in a very special way. Um, so I'm going to ask Gia if she has any comments about orientation, and then we'll pause and see if there are questions, especially about living on campus or moving on to campus. So I really think that NSOP is a lot of fun. Um, I am a little biased. I both enjoyed NSOP my first year and worked with NSOP for the three years after that. Um, but I think it's a really great, it's a, really the only time that you're at Barnard where they're literally throwing everything at you. 
Um, but as Dean Helval said, that can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, so my advice is to sit down at the beginning when you first get the schedule book and think about what's really important to you. So if you're interested in maybe being a chemistry major, you should probably go to the chemistry department open house and you know meet the faculty and explore your options and think about how you might pursue that. But probably don't try going to 10 different department open houses because as much as you may be interested in all of those things, one, you're not going to remember everything that you learned at all of them, and two, you're going to be completely overwhelmed um, because it is exhausting to be away from home for many of us the first time. It is exhausting to feel like you have commitments all the time. And I know for me what was exhausting was the fact that I didn't really have a predictable schedule. Um, I'm very much a type A personality, and so I was very ready for classes to start that next Tuesday um, just because I was looking forward to having a regular schedule and being able to anticipate what was going to happen the next day. And so I think that's one of the problems that some people encounter during NSOB. And so you really do want to think about that when you're deciding what to attend. Of course, you should attend the required events. So for example, Dean Hollabell will hold a session teaching you how to use eBear, which is the program that we select our classes with. And certainly, you should go to that so you know how to use eBear. Um, but for the things that are optional, you should really think about what's important to you and not try to do everything all the time, um, just to be sure to build in some time for you to recuperate from the day and for you to stop and think or maybe call home or talk to your friends or just have a little bit of downtime if that's what you feel like you need. Um, definitely, it's a great opportunity to meet new people. It's a good, it's, yes, there are gonna be awkward moments, but they're awkward for everyone and it's fine if you're having awkward small talk. Maybe you will find your best friend. Maybe there will people, be people who you talk to during NSOP and never talk to again after that. Um, and that's true for everyone, so really don't worry about it. Um, and it is a great chance for that, but if you feel like you can't take any more of that, back off and take a little bit of time for yourself because that's equally important, especially given that you are gonna be starting classes the next week and you do wanna feel ready to start classes since that is why we're here. Um, so you wanna be sure that from the very beginning you're sort of instituting that focus on your own well-being, not just on trying to fulfill what you think are the expectations, because during that week, they're really just trying to provide you with resources. There isn't an expectation that you do everything that's being thrown at you. So the question is, can you submit a request for the type of room that you're assigned to when that was not something on the roommate questionnaire? Um, you can certainly express your preference to Courtney Basin Colvin. We do have to get everyone placed in one type of room or another, so I don't know that she's able to guarantee anything like that. In fact, I can say that she cannot guarantee, but she will certainly note anything that you say to her in, in the hopes that maybe she can work it out. But there will be some of you living in triples, and there will be some of you living in quads. And I, I think that there's an assumption that a lot of students make that the more people involved, the more um, tricky it can be. I think that I have talked with a lot of students who've had very successful roommate relationships in every type of room. And I've talked to people who have been in doubles who have had some of the more fraught uh, relationships with their roommates. And so I, I, I hope that you will, as Gia said, keep an open mind about the kind of room you're in. I will also say that the vast majority of the quads are two doubles connected by a study space. So the majority of people will be living in doubles anyway. The question is, can you see some of the dorms after this? I don't know that residential life will be open and have people available at the end of the day, um, but if you, if you do want to try them, they're downstairs in Salzburger Tower. Um, I don't know that we are actually in a transition period on campus right now where we're actually have a lot of programs that happen during the summer are moving in or they're preparing rooms to move in, so I honestly don't know that they have a lot of rooms accessible to view. But if you want to try downstairs, you can. And if you want to contact Courtney to see if there's another time to come on campus to view something, you could. Because I think it's a part of the tour, is it not? At this point, it's not actually part of the yeah. tour because of the, all the summer programs and everything. The buildings are, and facilities is working on the rooms and various things during the summer. Mm -hmm. um, but you can try. It's worth, it's worth asking. That's kind of our philosophy on everything. It's worth asking. <laughs> The question is, is there information online about the different types of rooms? And yes, there is. On the Residential Life website, you can see layouts, you can see floor plans of rooms. I think it might have some square footage. Yes, and there's also a video um, that shows basically an introduction to first year residential life at Barnard. And in that video, they have images of a few different rooms in the quad. 
So you'll be able to get a pretty good look. Also, there are a bunch of pictures on Facebook. If you troll the Facebook pages from the past first year classes, so look at Barner 2016 and Barner 2013 and Barner 2014, a lot of people had the same questions as you. And so people who had done the pre-college program or people who had found pictures online will have posted them there. And so that will be a good place to find images of different rooms and all the different buildings. Okay, so the question was, can you request the actual hall? If not the type of room, then which of the three uh, residence halls in the quad that first years can live in. Again, I think that you can let Courtney Bazenkolven know if you have a particular request for some reason, and I think that she will note that to the extent that she's able. But again, all of the first years have to um, find their way somewhere into those three hallways. So certainly contact her with any kinds of questions or preferences you'd like to note, and she'll see what she can do. So the question is about the, your email accounts, which we discussed before, and the fact that you, as a Barnard student, have a, an email address that ends at barnard.edu and an email account that ends at columbia.edu. They both start with your uni, that combination of letters and numbers, but th if you put that uni and at columbia.edu, that is the address you have, and at barnard.edu is the Barnard address. And they are technically separate. And so what Gia was saying before, that a Columbia professor may default to an ending that says columbia.edu. And so you just want to make sure that you have things linked in such a way that you see emails no matter where they're going. Barnard, we will be using our default as at barnard.edu. But that's an easy way to figure out what your addresses are. Are the rooms air conditioned? Um, the rooms are air conditioned in Salzburg are not in the other two, in Brooks and Reed. It really doesn't matter, though, if you don't have air conditioning, um, because they turn it off towards the middle of September, so you might only have it for a week or two, and you don't need it, um, really, for a week or two in the beginning, and then for maybe a week or two at the end. So don't worry about it if you're in Brooks or Reed. Um, bring a fan, but you, you won't be in, oppressively heat, in an oppressively hot room if you're in one of the other two dorms. And again, please feel free to get in touch with the Residence Life office over the summer if you have further questions. But now we're going to move on and get into these questions about your academic planning. I will pause here before I go to my next screen and answer the question about academic advising because I know it's something that you would all want to know about who your academic advisor will be. One of the things I will be doing over the summer in addition to helping you plan your tentative course program is assigning you to your academic advisor. And this will be your general advisor for the first almost two years at Barnard. Students at Barnard are expected to declare their major in spring of sophomore year. So you have three full semesters of coursework plus a little bit of a fourth semester under your belt before you have to select a major for sure. And so the person helping you through that first year and a half or more is someone who's there really just to guide you generally, just to kind of help make sure that you understand how things work at Barnard, to help ask you questions about your thinking, what kind of thought process you put into this. And at Barnard, unlike maybe what you're used to in high school, even though we are such a small school, there's so much information and the material in different departments and programs gets so advanced that it's really hard for one person to know all the answers to all your questions. So your general advisor for your first year and a half is there to help guide you, but you should also be aware that you have access to all of the people on the Barnard campus to ask questions. Your general advisor will be your point person, you can also come to me with questions. You can also go to other faculty members during their office hours to ask questions about their courses. You will have a lot of people to help advise you. You will not feel, you should not feel that you are limited to one person as an advisor, but you do want to think of your assigned advisor as a point person, and it is the person you will need to talk to about the, these planning periods. Who is going to approve your plan? Who is going to approve your final course schedule when you start each semester? So your advisor, is going to be either a faculty member or a dean at Barnard. And if it is a faculty member, we may try to pair you according to your interests, but we don't feel that that's crucial because a good percentage of students who say, I think I absolutely know what I want to major in, change their mind anywhere from three to four times before that spring semester of sophomore year. And so again, if it turns out that you don't end up majoring in the area that your general advisor is situated, you can still talk to that person about your general path while also taking advantage of your other resources. And if you have a dean, of course, you have somebody who has a general sense of Barnard and a general sense of lots of departments, and so that might be an advantage to you in certain ways. But again, you'll want to look to faculty members for even more specific and advanced um, information. 
So you will find out the name of your advisor um, shortly before orientation, or actually kind of at the beginning of orientation. So for the purposes of summer, I would be your main point person, although there are some faculty member on campus during the summer who are happy to answer questions. But as you can imagine, a lot of faculty are also gone during the summer. They're doing research in other areas. They're away from campus. And so for more specific information, you may want to just take notes of your questions and then have them on hand for orientation in your first couple of weeks. But if you're really curious about certain things during the summer, please let me know. So you'll find out your academic advisor in orientation and meet that person at least once or twice during orientation and for some of you, the first week of classes as we get started.